जिंदाबाद सोहार मैं शोमा दत्ता कॉप ट्वेंटी सिक्स क्लाइमेट चेंज समिट बींग हेल्ड इन क्लास को वी आर कमिंग टू यू विद थर्ड अपडेट फ्रॉम द कॉप वेनू विच इज़ कॉल्ड द ऑफिशियल नेगोशिएशन वेनू कॉल द ब्लू जोन वी आर नाउ सिटिंग इन द कंट्री प्रेविलियन एरियाज एंड वील बी रिपोर्टिंग वेरी शॉर्ट एरियाज वेर वॉट एवर हैज हैपेंड इन द लास्ट थ्री डेज टूडे इज नवम्बर थ्री सो लास्ट थ्री इट स्टार्टेड ऑन अक्टूबर थर्टी फर्स्ट टू रिमाइंड यू सो वी आर ऑन द फोर्थ डे बट मोस्टली द लास्ट टू डेज हैव सीन लॉट ऑफ अनाउंसमेंट्स वन फ्रॉम कंट्री लीडर्स एंड द अदर्स आर ग्लोबल प्रोजेक्ट्स ग्लोबल एम्बिशंस ऑफ डूइंग समथिंग टैकल द क्लाइमेट क्राइसिस इन इंडिया ऑल ऑफ यू आर मस्ट हैव सीन प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदीज बिग अनाउंसमेंट्स ऑफ डूइंग नेट जीरो बाई ट्वेंटी सेवेंटी the movement groups the climate justice movements the forest peoples movements all other movements the indigenous peoples movements have condemned this as too little too late as we have seen in the ipcc reports both the 2018 uh, 1.5 sr and the recent assessment 6 uh, working group on physical science basis of climate change working group 1 that by 2030 if we cannot cut down our emission it doesn't matter where cut down our global emissions there is a very high chance that the earth systems the complex earth systems which are part of the climate systems are part of them can really collapse so that's a major risk in this perspective major economies saying they will make net zero pledges by 2050 and big economies like china and india china said by 2060 india says now says 2070 so it's very clearly committing the future generations to a kind of genocide by leaders of our generation and leaders means both the political leaders and the business leaders the second big announcement that came from the global leaders 110 countries now even more have uh, subscribed to the stopping deforestation that uh, announcement and this is saying that by 2030 all deforestation would be stopped actually if deforestation is stopped without affecting people who are dependent on forest resources that's a good thing but we must not forget in 2014 new york declaration on deforestation stopping deforestation nothing happened deforestation increased one good sign is the big forest area countries like brazil like russia all of you know brazil uh, holds a large part of the amazon russia is the largest area where the northern boreal forests are there and which are going up in flames every year so russia brazil democratic republic of congo the biggest uh, holder of tropical rainforest in african continent all of them have signed up usa uh, also have signed up so this is one good sign not a really uh, drastic climate action which is needed but one good sign that big forest area countries where big deforestation is also taking place like brazil indonesia has also signed up so we we'll have to see the details of this in the coming days because if this means that the forest dependent communities communities either living in forest or closely dependent on forest are displaced due to this uh, stopping deforestation measures then this will lead to further disasters for people who are already on the edge the third major declaration that has been accepted globally it's now about 100 countries they have uh, su- subscribed to this with a global methane pledge as all of us know methane has a shorter life term life time in the atmosphere it uh, degrades into carbon dioxide after a few years so methane in the shorter term of around 20 years is something like 85 to 90 times as powerful a greenhouse gas as carbon dioxide of methane emission has always been said to be the low hanging fruit because there are known sources of methane emission the grazing animals particularly raising large scale animal farms for beef this is one major source from agricultural uh, sources and also agricultural sources including from cattle so a huge source where which is called fugitive emission all the natural gas production fields their pipelines everything leaks methane so that's one big area we still don't know whether all those fugitive methane emissions will be taken into account because what is being uh, indicated at which is basically from agriculture and animal husbandry areas 
So that is uh, one area which again it might look to be good at the first side, but we have to look closely. Uh, the other major thing that groups in India will be specially interested in is Prime Minister Modi's announcement of the Pancham Rit, including his announcement of how what are the five steps that the India will do. So we'll come up with an update specially focused on that. But in that, again, let me say, Prime Minister Modi's speech actually confused me. One, forget about the 2070 pledge, which is actually uh, useless, because actually the climate, global climate, the climate system, the earth systems, will not differentiate between, okay, India is a comparatively poorer country, so climate systems will not go haywire if India keeps emitting. So there is a critical need, there is a need for climate finance, there is a need for climate action, far greater climate action by richer countries, but big emitters like China, India, Indonesia, they cannot really, Mexico, they cannot escape the responsibility by saying we are poor countries. So this is one area. The other area which actually really confused me is that Mr. Modi was saying energy. Every target that he gave, 40%, 50% uh, installation, you are saying so much of percentage of energy. If we really look at it, what he is talking about solar and wind basically, solar and wind power plants. And in Indian context, the electricity, the power sector contributes something like 16 to 18% of our total primary energy consumption. But Mr. Modi's announcements focused only on solar and wind being replacing power, also the so called green hydrogen and uh, related things. Green hydrogen is again another sort of oxymoron. Lot of commentators in Indian media have said, and also in international media, that hydrogen is becoming a big green energy source. In fact, we need a little bit of understanding to that, that hydrogen is not, a, not an energy source on the Earth, unless we have a pipeline from the Earth to Jupiter. So that's not feasible. So as we said, probably briefly mentioned in the last update, so hydrogen, production of hydrogen needs more energy than when you convert that hydrogen into energy, whether electricity or heat. If you convert it to heat, you get a very little fraction of the energy you put in to create that hydrogen, to generate that hydrogen, either from natural gas or from water. So where this green energy is coming from, it's really confusing. Just putting some solar energy into the electrolyzing water to get the hydrogen is not a really green thing. It's again green washing industry and business almost as usual. And the attraction, big attraction is to come back to again that existing gas and oil infrastructure, a large part of that can be used for hydrogen infrastructure, hydrogen based particularly transportation fuel and heating fuel for so the same kind of industry, same kind of groups to do this. So we are seeing again and again this kind of obfuscation, this kind of trying to fool the people. We don't believe that the leaders and their advisors don't understand these issues. We don't believe they don't understand the difference between the amount of power that a nation needs and the total energy basket. We don't believe that they don't understand the difference between hydrogen being a source of energy and a carrier of energy. Basically. Hydrogen is like a battery with some losses in between. So all these are confusing. All these shows, even facing a crisis, Indian leaders, Indian political leaders, as well as the global political leaders are really not serious about averting a massive climate crisis in which several future generations, maybe 50 to 100 generations, will be put to a very tough, difficult situation to live on the earth. So Namaskar, wait for the next update. We'll also, we are also coming every two days with an Hindi update. See you again. Thank you. Namaskar.